The 2016 Beluga Summit in Inuvik brought together Inuvalut organizations and community members, along with government partners, academia, national Inuit partners, and Inupiat Alaskan counterparts. They all came together to share knowledge about beluga whales from all perspectives and to discuss the future of beluga research and management. The past few years, my passion has developed where I'd like to see a stronger bridge between science and the environment that I'm familiar with, my culture, things like that. And so this summit was just the perfect um, definition of that. So I was looking forward to helping in any way, whether it's moving tables around, whether it's chairing um, a day, whether it's just getting people more familiar and oriented. I was looking to help with that in any way because the whole summit itself is just what I want to see more of. There's really great representation of elders from each of the communities here, harvesters and lodgers, but also youth, and that's what I was able to um, focus on was the youth representation. So I'd really like to acknowledge and um, say it's probably a pretty good sign that youth are involved and we're looking at the past, but we're also looking towards the future. I think we're here mainly to share our knowledge with how we prepare muktuk and uh, how we do our hunting, because uh, like they say, it's different from community to community. What do you like about beluga hunting? It's fun. Yeah. Get to go boarding and hunting. You ever learn how to prepare the meat when it's ready too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What's the hardest part about beluga whaling? Chasing it. I think uh, belugas are changing their habits when they're migrating from west to east. They're coming in different areas because the ice conditions are breaking up early. On the 9th of June, there were whales already in our area, Shingle Point and Shallow Bay. So they're coming in earlier, and, um, and that's good, yeah. Well, it's good to see them working together on the issues that they're concerned about with the, with the beluga for this herd. Because mm. we had the same concerns, you know, in our area, because these beluga, they migrate through our area going north. So... I'm very happy to be here. What's one thing that you've learned while you've been here? Well, science, let me put it that way. For example, if you look at animals that are exposed to a lot of contaminants, like the one in the St. Lawrence. We do have some science, but the way they do it here is pretty good. Mm -hmm. Usually in a healthy ecosystem or healthy animal, you should have a good balance between the parasites and the, and the host. Why is it important for communities to share their, this knowledge? They're the ones that see all of this happening out there. They want the resource. Yeah. They know what's happening out there. You know, the scientific knowledge or scientific information can help them. Mm -hmm. But they're the ones that are watching and knowing what's going on. And this type of a conference should be geared towards giving the people more to talk. Science is good, but there's only so much they can contribute. So we get to see what's actually out there in our ocean yeah. that involves the diet of the whales which, you know, gets into the whales and then into us. Yeah. Like, for instance, before before I got involved with DFO FJMC, if we run into anything on the whale, I talked to an elder about this and he says, cut that part out, nothing else wrong with, with the rest of the whale, right? I've been working for DFO FJMC and HTC on a whale wander contract for the last three years. And working on this contract has opened my eyes on what could affect short-term and long-term health of my people. As to long-term effects, short-term effects coming out of the scientist's point of view, right? Mm, yeah. mm. So that's a big part of eating a whale. So you heard one of the ladies say, hearing what's inside that raw muktuk, the parasites, yeah. that affected her eating raw muktuk. It's our food, and there's so much going on in this world with the oil spills, like the radiation, or the whales affected from that, and then would we be affected from them? Yeah. You know, I've not eaten raw muktuk since then. I'm not. I I just can't. It really scared me, and my kids don't even want to eat it raw anymore. And then just yesterday, 
I talked with a guy, I can't remember his name, and he explained it to me. And I think now I'm looking forward to eating the raw maktak again. Make sure that everyone has a chance to talk. If there's somewhere, I'm more here to kind of kind of keep the conversation going. But I'm looking to you all. <laughs> What's been really exciting is seeing how engaged everyone has been. I feel like I've really I've probably heard everyone speak at least once, and that's really really exciting because I think often in these environments it can be uncomfortable for one person or many people, um, but to be able to really have a lot of people engage and sharing with one another. That's been amazing. I hear what you're saying, and we hear that uh, you know that your your hunting area, your areas of where you camp and stuff like that. So we respect that a lot. How important is a conference like this to you, and how important is it to share your knowledge with other communities? Oh, it's very important, especially when the knowledges are passed down from generation to generation, and. Uh, I alluded earlier is that uh, we don't praise our elders, the ones before us, enough because they're the ones that uh, formed us, that forged us in how to be, uh, be respective to the animals and also how protective measures occur within our own area. Mm -hmm. Family means everything in the way that we harvest and that the way we've been taught by our parents and grandparents on how to respect mammals, animals. And, uh, we have an ongoing relationship with uh, the sea mammals. And, uh, I guess one thing that uh, impressed me was how the communities came together and shared information from their community perspective and forced the scientists to sit down and listen and learn. So that, that was really, that was wonderful for me to, to, to switch seats and have mm -hmm. them uh, share with us and teach us. Well, there was a lot of good comments made throughout the, the uh, four days we were gathered here and I, I picked up a few things that I didn't know about really before. Mm -hmm. um, so. It was a learning experience, but new and old, and meeting different people from other settlements and getting their views and ideas. It's so good now to see Western science and TK, TLK working together. You know, without the two, we get lost further ahead. Um, and we, we, we all share the same resources out there, whether you be from Saxon, Ulukhaktub, or Tuk. I really believe it is very important for the region and the ISR because we're users of the ocean and the Lugas and it's very, very important and I think it should continue to happen. The ocean, as we all know, has been so important for generations past and for the future. And like uh, my good friend Ruben, you know, I really put a lot of emphasis on the um, elders present and, and those that have left us. Um, without their wisdom and knowledge, we wouldn't be sitting around the table like this today. So, you know, in the past 40, 50 years, we've come a long, long ways. Thank you.